so as to properly orientate the launcher before the successive separations of pressure sealed down plank. And you can see it being oriented right now. You can see on, on, on the lower right popping off the little white lights. Those are nozzles. It's not power, actually. It's just uh, re reorienting. Yes, so we, we, we are on an orbit with a perigee of 270 kilometers and an apogee of 1.2 million kilometers, which is called HEO orbit, standing for High Elliptical Orbit. This uh, series of ballistics is what they call it, the ballistics phase, is actually a series of rotations and separations, uh, many different maneuvers, some very long, a couple of uh, maybe 20, 25 seconds, some very short, as short as three or four seconds. As we, in some minutes, we'll have been separating uh, the three bodies, so com commencing by Herschel Settle Telescope. And we separate them in different directions because... Yes, uh, but we don't not forget that we must respect the, conf the strong constraint on the uh, thermal uh, radiations on the Herschel telescope. Separation du telescope Herschel. Well, there's the first good news. Separation of the first passenger Herschel. You notice the people in the Jupiter holding their applause until the end of the mission when Planck... Yes, the mission is not totally completed. But you see how, how, how the surface satellite is separated. It's just pushed away from the composite. Yeah, gently pushed away from the composite, and then we shall orientate the composite to separate the silda. Now, the silda is what? It's a protective, uh, protective like the fairing for the satellite? No, it, it, it's a structure, a slight carbon structure, which uh, allows the uh, assembly of two satellites, one on top of another. And the Arian has many different types of uh, protective, uh, of carrying structures. The, the Silda is the black bell-shaped structure there. There are different ones for different uh, smaller satellites and when we're launching three satellites. And it's something that Arian uses. They've used uh, one of these structures over 100 times in the launchers. Yes, so this uh, system will be separated by a power technical cut of the bottom part of the Silda. And uh, the, the rest of the structure will be pushed away with separation springs. Separation of the silda, the black bit there, in about uh, 10 seconds. The white band is the vehicle equipment bay. That's where the computers are, giving all these orders for separation and everything else. Yes, yeah, the onboard computer, the brains of the uh, of the uh, compo of the launcher, of the composite. OK, we have separated the, uh, the silda. Then Planck satellite is ready to be oriented before its separation from the uh, BB. We only had four minutes between two separations of the satellites. Is that short, long, or what you would call average? Uh, I would call that the average time between separation for, for the bodies. So now we've spun up Herschel in position. We've spun up for the Silda separation. What's left to do is spin up for the final passenger. For the final passenger. And then the rest of the launch show will reorientate in order not to uh, to collide with the orbits of the two of the three separated bodies actually Herschel uh, now that it's separated we can give you what they call the Leop phase the launch and early orbit phase they'll be picked up by their South African station at Hartbist Hook uh, first and then there will be three Apogee motor firings on the second fourth and sixth day and after solar array deployment it's a, wow. there we are the final uh, separation of <laughs> a hug between, between the two men, Jacques Dordain and Jacques Le Gal. Oh. And a goes. very that's successful a, scientific mission that, tonight. That's Arian, a wonderful success, really. Ariane 5 once again delivering. We will, um, just to continue, uh, in 11 days. So we're back to ease up we'll now. Get the hand, we'll get the handover from, uh, for Herschel and for Planck. They will also have three Apogee motor firings, and after uh, about eight days of in-orbit testing, it should uh, be well on its way, a million That's kilometers. A, it's a real start for ESOC uh, Center in order to perform all the operations necessary before the two satellites are put in their final orbit. We're going to go to the first of many, hopefully, launch replays. This beautiful day launch. There's not, there's not so many clouds. It we're, was very cloudy this, this morning. We were worried about the cloud cover. Yeah, uh, we had even uh, heavy rain, but it all cleared up just before the launch. Hopefully we'll have some other replays to show you because there are many different observation sites here in the space base. I think there's six or seven of them, and we have cameras at all.
and as soon as they come in, we will pass them along to you, of course. We are waiting now, of course, for the speeches, the post-launch speeches. We will be hearing from Iran Space Chairman and Chief Executive Jean-Yves Le Gall, who will introduce Jean-Jacques Dordon, Director General of the European Space Agency. And these two men are making their way out from the what they call the fishbowl, which is where the technicians and the top management people are behind the red bars. There, as you can see them, congratulating each other. And as soon as uh, Jean-Yves Le Gall is ready, I see the cameras are setting up and they're set setting up the podium. We'll be hearing from him first. Uh, in, a in a few minutes, I think.